Hi there, and welcome to another amazing interview. And I've got such a fabulous guest today, Jess, who has got a fantastic Instagram, a uh, really good sense of humor. And uh, I had her on about a year ago, but if you missed it, we're going to do a little recap about Jess's history, and then we'll get into some other questions. So, hey, Jess, how are you? Hi, good. How are you? Thanks for having me back. Oh, well, you were such a good guest and so many people loved you in the comments. Uh, Just for those that don't know your history, could you just give us a little reason why you're sort of eating carnivore? Yes. So I initially started carnivore to lose weight and then I stuck with it because of all the other benefits. But I found it through my husband who watched the Joe Rogan, Sean Baker podcast, the the infamous Joe Rogan, Sean Baker one, the first one. And uh, he said, hey, I think you should watch this and listen to what he's saying. It kind of sounds like it could help you. And if you want to do it, I'll do it with you. So me and, and my husband both started or tried carnivore for World Carnivore Month, January 2020. And... We both loved it, and I stuck with it. My husband isn't as strict as me, but uh, I absolutely fell in love. And some of the issues that I was struggling with that it helped with was chronic constipation. I had chronic constipation for about 20 years of my life. I had really bad acne since sixth grade until the carnivore diet. It started healing. Um, So for again about 20 years of my life and uh, I always struggled with my weight I would lose weight gain weight lose weight gain weight and um, the mental health aspect of it was also super uh, awesome I don't know what else and what other word I can use but it was amazing astounding mind-blowing how much of an impact changing my diet had on my mental health. And I wasn't even expecting that. So a a lot of times I say I initially started carnivore to lose weight, but I stuck with it because of the mental health benefits. Yeah, and that's a a brilliant summary, actually, and very similar to me. Um, I'm five years carnivore. And I did a 30-day challenge. I was keto before that and like carbs. So I, th- I think I was really into understanding getting the carbs out was quite good for me. Um, you really had constipation for 20 years. That, that That's amazing. I mean, what did you try to, yeah. uh, to resolve that? Was it lots of fiber by any chance? Oh, <laughs> I yeah I so I grew up I was born in 91 and just back in those days way back in the 1900s (laughs) um (laughs) people didn't talk about poop it's way more uh, uh okay to talk about it now but back in those days I didn't talk about it with my family doctors never really asked me about it and I do not ever remember having a normal bowel movement basically my entire life um i was just all i was always constipated when i went to the bathroom i was constipated and i always joke that god was just preparing me to have twins even though it's not exactly the same but um it was like always super painful like bleeding all that like just not fun there would be times where i would when I, i remember being younger and just crying and my mom coming in and like holding my hand and I was just crying not understanding what was happening and I think at that point she uh took me to the doctor um she didn't know I didn't communicate with her though that that's how what happened every single time um so she just thought it was like a one-off thing um and I went to the doctor and they I don't remember talking to them about my bowel movements or them asking or anything it was just because I was sick all of the time because my immune system was so awful because I hadn't got issues and things like that and they just recommended fiber and would put me on antibiotics if I ever got sick so my childhood was just basically doctors telling me to eat more fiber eat more fiber eat more fiber and I would go in with a sore throat or runny nose or some a cough and they would just put me on a z-pack um I had one doctor I remember uh who I didn't even have to basically tell him or have a conversation with him he 
knew me and every time I come came in he'd be like oh you're you're sick again okay z-pack and it was like a three minute doctor visit he would just prescribe me a z-pack and send me on my way um and I was really young at that point where my mom was with me but of course we didn't have any idea how bad uh antibiotics were at that point you just trusted your doctor you know but yeah n- fiber never helped and never resolved the situation and it was really bad too to the point where i i know the expression like i tried everything like you, you literally can't try everything but i felt like i tried everything to resolve my constipation issues even the like enemas or whatever you call it like that didn't help like even like the strong things that usually give people like instant diarrhea never had an impact on me literally only carnivore ever helped that issue so like removing fiber completely was the only thing that ever helped my constipation (laughs) i mean um you're right about talking about issues i mean i've never said this publicly but my constipation got so bad this is before carnivore obviously that i had to put something up there uh at the, the, the reverse end which is one of the most uncomfortable experiences of my life And I was eating tons of roughage and fiber and, um, you know, I was having bran flakes and everything. And it was just, uh, even if I went out and, you know, had a muffin, it would be a bran muffin. And it never helped. And as soon as I removed fiber, my lower left quadrant pain completely went. I had a colonoscopy and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, you're right. We can talk about it. And I, I can't believe how many people still fall for the fiber myth when there's yeah. all these real people like you and me uh, who have had these real issues and resolved it with no fiber. So, um, yeah, and antibiotics, uh, that, that's another thing. I have not had a visit to the doctor in over 10 years. So that that was even my low carb journey started to get me healthy. Um, yeah. What was the last time? I, I haven't been, yeah, I haven't been sick in uh, basically five. So I've been carnivore a little over four years, but I haven't been sick in like five years, um, probably longer than that now, actually, because I haven't been sick like since my husband and I have been married and we, we're going on like eight years, I think. So um, it's been longer than when I was carnivore because um, I well so like I like I do essential oils and I kind of attribute um, it to the essential oils because I, I I mean I started eating gluten free and that helped a lot with my um, gut issues and health issues and stuff like that. I still would get constipated, but it was not as bad as when I was eating um, gluten and tons of fiber and stuff like that. But um, so going gluten free helped a lot. And then I did start using essential oils. And there's this one called On Guard that um, I think is really beneficial to me. I I really like it. Um, And then I kind of stopped getting sick. And then when I started carnivore, it was like my immune system went on like super turbo <laughs> mode and I like haven't gotten the sniffles. I haven't even gotten, I never got the COVID. Um, and people tell me, oh, you got it. You were just asymptomatic. I'm like, okay, well, <laughs> if you want to, that's fine with me. Like I, di- I didn't experience any sort of symptoms or anything if I did have it. But yeah, I've never gotten like the sniffles, a cold, the flu anything any sore throats anything like that since carnivore it was like i've been supercharged and my husband he um still gets sick sometimes and like i'm still like we still like touch and um sleep in the same bed and like i'll kiss him and things like that so and i still haven't gotten sick so yeah i'm definitely my immune system is definitely boosted <laughs> yeah definitely it sounds great actually that um you know there would be some people who say, yeah, you're only healthy because you've got a husband because it happened when you got your husband, but uh, he's still getting sick. So, yeah, getting back on the strict carnivore, I think that's that would be my answer. So you um, you spent some time sort of traveling, I believe, in the last year and doing a bit of research. Where do you live right now? So I am back in Okinawa, Japan, but 
I went to back to my hometown in Southern California for six months because my husband got deployed to Thailand and I didn't want to stay in Okinawa by myself. So I went back home for six months while he was gone and um, got to do a lot of fun things while I was in California. And I miss it now. I miss the United States again. (laughs) What did you miss? Uh, So while I was in the U.S., I got to meet with a bunch of different like local farmers and ranchers and do some interviews uh i have the interviews up on my youtube channel if people want to go watch it it's just my name Jocelyn randall but um it was really fun i got to kind of travel around the u.s um not towards the east coast i stayed more towards the west coast in the middle but i got to travel around and meet people and see how like how build a relationship with some farmers and ranchers and and try really delicious meat and learn more about regenerative agriculture and uh, how farmers actually love and treat their animals and respect their animals and kind of just uh, break some of the myths uh, bust some of the myths about it but yeah so i i just uh, the main things i miss about the u.s is the convenience of everything you don't you don't realize how spoiled you are in the u.s until you leave the u.s um especially moving to such a remote place like okinawa it's so small and you don't really have access to as much stuff as you do in the u.s and um especially with like meat people people are always like oh but you have the best meat in the world over there it's like I kind of think I have a kind of a controversial opinion about Wagyu. I think it's a little overhyped. So I'm, I don't think that I'm as spoiled here as in the U.S. I, I, I still think American beef when it's like raised right is like the absolute top of the line beef that you can get. But I'm going on a super tangent. But yes, yeah, so I miss the convenience of the U.S., Um, I miss just the aspect of like freedom. Like it just feels different. The culture is different. The people are different. Um, And yeah, I do like a lot of things about here though, but I definitely miss the US. (laughs) Well, that's okay. I mean, um, I think you always think the grass is going to be greener, don't you? You get, and and (laughs) then it's the things you didn't think you'd maybe miss. Uh, In saying that, I live in the UK. I would not miss the rain. (laughs) I I know that for a fact. (laughs) So you're in a blue zone, by the way, for the people that have got their ears uh, glued to the to the audio. Um, so if you're in a blue zone, you don't eat any meat, do you, really? Because that's <laughs> that's what they tell you. Um, I'm more interested in the farming. You said you learned quite a bit. What Have you got a main takeaway about the regenerative um, farming system there that you found particularly interesting? Uh, I think that it's really cool how you can have so many different things happening at one time because I think a a lot of people's perception of ranching and farming is kind of like the mono agriculture where it's like you do one thing and one thing only. But with regenerative agriculture, these places are teeming with life. Uh, There's this one place that I went to called Reprovisions or it's Double P Ranch, but they Pro- provide meat for reprovisions um, and their ranch what they had cattle and I, I think they had sheep they definitely had goats they had pigs um, I, I don't know if they had other animals I forget but I, de- I saw a uh, goat and pigs and cattle and then there was tons of different like agriculture around and bushes and trees and um, things for the cows to eat so many different types of things and then we were walking through and he was uh, talking to me and we saw like a turtle um, which I think is funny because a lot of times people say uh, there's not turtles in fields. There is. There absolutely is. We saw a little box turtle. I think it was. No, I don't. I don't want to say what kind of turtle it was, but it was like a little turtle. It was so cute. And then we would hear like mice like scurrying around in the fields. And th- I think it's lovely that they embrace the nature. They don't try to kill it. They embrace it and work with it and work with the environment. And so it can be the best that it can be instead of trying to kill it. And it was really interesting to see the juxtaposition between his place and the place right next to his. They do 
um, kind of the standard uh, raising of cattle. And the grass was super short. It, you could see like the wind damage on the grass. And he didn't have any cattle on his property because he didn't have enough grass there to feed them. So he had to like send them to get processed early. Whereas the the Eric, the guy that I was with at Rep- the Double P Ranch, he he still had his cattle grazing and he, his grass was like as tall as me. And it was just really, really interesting to see that difference between like standard and regenerative agriculture. Yeah, I think you summed it up there. They're not trying to kill it. You know, and that that's the thing. I'm, I grew veg in my 40s before I did the um, the proper way of eating. And my little patch of veg was like full knocks. I was killing everything. You know, mice and <laughs> fat. Yeah, I was, you know, bees, everything. Just trying to stop them eating all the veg. So I think um, people do need to get into this type of thing. When I first hooked up with Sean Baker and I was, I was at Meet Our Ex coaching there, I remember thinking, oh, Sean talks about this farming too much. You know, it's too political. But it is really, really important for the planet and, um, you know, the, the food supply. Wagyu, by the way, why do you think that's overrated then? So... Every time I have it, I'm not saying it's not delicious, but it is a lot more expensive. It's even expensive here. It's a lot more expensive. And I just don't think the taste is that much better for what you're paying. And interestingly enough, even though it kind of has more fat in it, um, it it doesn't keep me full. After I eat Wagyu, I'm hungry a couple hours later versus just like a standard ribeye that I could get at the U.S. commissary that keeps me full for hours. Um, I could eat one and like not be hungry again till dinner. But Wagyu is interesting. I'm I'm like hungry again. So it's just I, for some reason, it's just not as satisfying to me. I don't think the taste is so much better that I'm going to pay that extra amount to get it. Um, so, yeah, I just I personally think it's overhyped. If someone ever gave me like free Wagyu, I'm not going to turn it away, but I'm not going to like go seek it out or say like, I only eat Wagyu. <laughs> yeah, and I think Wagyu translates as Japanese cow as well. It's not particularly fancy. And I agree with you. I If I have a, a fact piece of lamb it it does fill me up more than wago does definitely and it costs about a quarter of the price so you know it's a it's a win-win I, I i do find it very interesting that you got into the farming and that sort of aspect and the environmental um side of things i mean were you plant-based at any point in your your life no, thankfully i never fell for that scam because the biggest poll i thought for the going plant-based was the moral part of it. And I never had any moral qualms with eating meat. My whole entire life, I always just was like, this is what humans do. We eat meat. And I always thought it was weird that vegans had an issue with eating meat. And I never, like the circle, I watched The Lion King, I learned about the circle of life, and I never questioned it again. (laughs) So um, I was never morally pulled to remove meat from my diet um but i did fall for the scam that vegetables were the healthiest thing that you could eat so i did eat heavy vegetables um not a lot of fruit because i was always kind of picky with fruit i did eat fruit though but i've always been kind of picky with my fruit so it was like heavy vegetables and then the only meat that i would eat would be lean meat only so i ate a ton of white meat chicken and uh fish but I wasn't. I was never really like a huge fan of fish, so it was mostly just white meat chicken. So I was eating a lot of dry chicken breast and a lot of vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> but you see, you're very good um, uh, example of a good experiment because people could say, "Well, you didn't eat enough veg, you didn't even have enough fruit. That's why you had all these issues." But you did. You did eat those things, and you had those issues, and you took them out of your diet, and now you don't have those issues. So mm-hmm. I know that's an N equals one, but I think I've got over a thousand stories now. So those 
that's data, isn't it? That is that is data. I mean, there's two of us yeah. here, and we both had the same thing: constipation, fibre stuffed down our throats because that's the remedy. It didn't work. Stop the fibre. That was better. Uh, I used to have fruit and veg, and I didn't have red meat. I didn't have saturated fat, and I was a state. You know, I really was a state, and I was a personal trainer, quite an advanced one as well, training people in the Olympics, and. Uh, you know, thought yeah, forty. It was just I was just getting fatter and sick, uh, pre-diabetic. So um, the reason I'm saying that is because uh, we spoke just before we came on about comments from you, you get the odd comment that people just don't believe all this stuff. And uh, I was really pleased because for the first time ever, I was called a shill for the meat industry. And I, you know, uh, and you just think people just don't want to believe this stuff. And um, obviously, you've got a huge following on Instagram, and I, I know you're very good with the humour about the comments. But what do you think of people that comment like that? What do you think? Uh, I appreciate it because every comment is a comment, and it goes towards boosting myself in the algorithm. So I appreciate the trolls just as much as the supporters because <laughs> they're secret supporters, uh, whether they know it or not. Um, some, sometimes comments will, will bug me, but most of the time I'm pretty good at, at just thinking logically and just knowing that they don't know what they're talking about. So if the fa if the comment isn't true, why would it bug me? Uh, I know it's not true. So I, I move on or I usually respond with something that I think is funny. Um, <laughs> and the, the funny, the good thing about trolls too or people who are really adamant about uh, red meat being bad and vegetables being good uh, is that they have to be right. So I could comment anything and they're going to respond. So uh, sometimes I'll pick out certain comments. Uh, you kind of learn the psychology of these people and um, you know who to look for and I'll respond and then they'll respond and um, I'll say something else like just nothing to really do. I'm not arguing with them or like doing the studies back and forth thing. I'm literally making the dumbest comments, but they will always respond. So then I end up getting like 10 extra comments on my content. So usually I, that's how I, I deal with them is I kind of manipulate them and use them to boost my content more. <laughs> Yeah, and I think that's one of the things I've I've got cute to as well. And I've said thank you very much for increasing my engagement. Uh, and then you say something that you know is going to get a response. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, yeah. Anyway, that I've just gone off the subject there, really. Um, so, where can people find you? So I am on Instagram, like you said, it's just my name, Jesslyn Randall. And then I put all of the interviews that I was telling you about that I did in the U.S. on a YouTube channel. And that's just, again, my name, Jesslyn Randall. Um, and I'm on TikTok, too. I don't really engage a lot there. So Instagram is the place that I am the most engaged. And if anyone messages me, I'm really good at responding to messages and keeping on top of that. So um, yeah, Instagram is is my main platform. Your main place. Yeah. So at the moment then, what what is your regime? Are you doing one meal a day, two meal a day? Are you fasting? What are you doing? So right now, I actually started eating a little more because um, I am pregnant. So I don't know if you saw that, but um, I just announced today on my Instagram that I uh, were expecting this summer. The due date is in August. Um, so I've been getting a lot hungrier lately. Um, so eat for the first like three, almost four years, of doing carnivore, uh, I stuck with two meals a day and that always satisfied me. And then when I got pregnant, it it was crazy of just how much hungrier I was all of a sudden. So I started eating more and I've, pro I've done like three meals a day pretty consistently now. Um, so yeah, that that's what I'm doing basically is about three meals a day with snacks. Mm -hmm. I found that snacking or just like grazing i guess um has helped me a lot i haven't gotten sick or anything no morning sickness or anything like that i've, I've felt great so i found that just like kind of constantly keeping food in my stomach has helped a lot what uh what do you graze with what are you snacking on 
Oh, um, just normal just carnivore things like meat, jerky. Well, we get I'm, I love making homemade jerky, like extra bacon. Hard boiled eggs are always a good snack. Um, things like that. Just quick, easy carnivore things that you can you can make that are <laughs> the standard snacks. Cheese, milk. I will drink milk, yogurt, things like that. Yeah, do you have raw milk or do you have pasteurized? When I was in California, um, when I had access to the raw milk and the like really good quality dairy and stuff, uh, like good culture cottage cheese too. Ooh, that is so good. The double cream. Um, I I was doing the raw and and things like that, but here, um, it's not raw, but I'm I'm still drinking it. I'm still gonna do it. I I want I want milk, <laughs> and um, the yogurt is is not as good as you could get in the United States. But um, I'm still gonna eat the yogurt too. <laughs> yeah. Do you, have you had a huge sort of ramp up in wanting dairy then since you've been pregnant? Um, kind of. Yeah. And I don't. I. That's interesting. I never really thought about it. But yeah, I did. I have been eating a lot more dairy. Um, than I was before. Not um, not a lot of cheese. I will add cheese to like meals, but I've never been a huge cheese person. So I'm not like snacking heavily on cheese. It's mostly like yogurt and uh, milk and things like that. Cool. That's great. Um, that is fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. And I didn't know that news. I hadn't spotted that. I deliberately kept oh. away. So I, so it was a real conversation. So that was nice that that organically came out. So congratulations, Jess. Um, that was fabulous. And of course, you'll be able to annoy everyone in the future with uh, bringing up your baby as a carnivore. Uh, will <laughs> certainly trigger a few people. Um, anyway, I really want to thank you for your time. I'm really glad you came back and um, just thanks. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, thank you for having me again. This is so fun. Thank you so much for listening to my podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. Your support means the absolute world to me. And if you're enjoying the show, I've got a small favour to ask you. I'd be incredibly grateful if you would consider becoming a supporter and make a small monthly donation. Your contribution will really help to improve the show. I'll be able to improve the software, maybe put a few more episodes out and do many things that I'm hoping to do in the future. Do them a lot quicker. So it's a small monthly contribution. You can cancel at any time and the link is in the show notes. Thanks very much for listening.